video today because I just saw the absolute dumbest possible thing on Twitter this morning, and it's Brian Brigade's fault because he highlighted the stupidest take on inflation ever. And it's it brought me to the realization, I suppose, of just how staggeringly deluded you have to be in order to still be supporting Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party. So there's this lady, and I just want to highlight, I'll, I'll look over her like comment right now that Brian brought up. But th this is what you have to actually believe in order to think that Justin Trudeau is doing a good job. And like, no wonder Justin Trudeau's polling is absolutely in the gutter these days. But Christine says, who, you know, fancies herself a political geek in her bio, says, listen, I too dislike inflation. I dislike that groceries are insanely expensive and housing is impossible to afford. But unless Trudeau is personally responsible for a once in a lifetime pandemic and the war in Ukraine, maybe let's admit it's not his fault things suck. Like, goodness, how, how, how? patronizing is that to both people who understand how inflation work and to Justin Trudeau himself. Justin Trudeau somehow is never responsible for anything. This is this is where the sort of tr true and on crowd come in. Doesn't matter what happens in Canada, somehow it's always someone else's fault. It doesn't matter that literally inflation is mostly just caused by the government's printing of money, taxation, and spending. Somehow it's COVID-19 and Vladimir Putin's fault that prices are high. It, it, it's insane. It's basically like the liberal like voters or people who are hardcore liberal supporters basically treat Justin Trudeau like he's eight years old. Like, like seriously, like if an eight-year-old was prime minister, like, well, yeah, you can't really blame him for inflation. He doesn't know how his spending is affecting all the all of the sort of like inflationary forces on the economy. But they actually they actually act like Justin Trudeau is that eight-year-old that he just he he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know that raising the carbon tax and spending money to keep people at home not working that how was he supposed to know that that's how inflation worked? And the only place that this is actually worse is with the NDP and Jagmeet Singh. I haven't really seen people like, you know, of course, there's people not online defending Jagmeet Singh because he's not the prime minister, although he's responsible for everything that Justin Trudeau is doing because he's, you know, propping him up in parliament. But Jagmeet Singh's out there. And this, like, this is uh, this is more conspiratorial than anything you'll ever see on the right. Is Jagmeet Singh pretending that all businesses are colluding to raise prices in order to gouge Canadians? Like, it doesn't even make economic sense to collude with other businesses, because if everyone's raising their prices and you don't raise your prices, you're going to absorb all their business. And funny how it's only businesses only decide to become greedy at the same time Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh are blowing massive amounts of money into the economy. Like, to be a, a liberal and NDP politician, you actively have to not understand how money works you you have you have to have never taken an economics 101 course this is probably this is basically why they got rid of bill morno because he actually kind of understood how the economy works and that was kind of destroying the liberals pandemic spending plans because he was actually kind of pushing back a little bit but you have to not understand the basic concept that if everyone makes like a hundred dollars a day and bread's a dollar fifty that if everyone starts suddenly making a thousand dollars a day that like that you shouldn't be surprised if bread becomes 1050 but the liberals and the ndp think that somehow all prices should be fixed at the exact same uh number at all times and only somehow greed and somehow you know bombs going off in russia and ukraine is that's the only time prices can ever go up that's the only time inflation ever comes into effect also it's greed also, it's not Justin Trudeau's fault. Also, Justin Trudeau is doing a great job dealing with inflation, but also don't blame him for inflation, even though he supposedly has the ability to fight inflation. Like that, that, like that's actually what these people on Twitter and Facebook are arguing that Justin Trudeau has nothing to do with inflation. Yeah, he's doing a fantastic job fighting inflation. Like the only way you could fight inflation is if, if you had control over how inflation is caused which of course is printing money and spending money. Yet somehow Justin Trudeau is completely shielded from responsibility on the one end, but he gets all the credit on the other end for spending more money to help people like, you know, deal with inflation, which is causing inflation. It it's, it's, insane to me that people out there, and I know I keep saying insane, it's driven me a little insane dealing with this stuff that they are just people out there who just like they make justifications in their head of why things are happening and they just stick with them. I guarantee you, Brian, Brian Bergay is never going to get to the, uh, get through to that lady. And I, I agree with this comment. I'll pull it back up here. I thought he had a great way of putting this. It's like, yes, not all inflation is Justin Trudeau's fault, but it is, it's it's economically illiterate to think that the leader of a country has just nothing to do with what happens within the country. Again, there's just no agency that liberal supporters give Justin Trudeau. Good things that happen are somehow 
his doing and bad things that happen are somehow someone in a different country's fault. It's just not how it's not how the world works. But to be, support the Liberal Party, you have to believe that everything is just out of Justin Trudeau's hands, but everything that's good fell into his hands, and it, it, and it's somehow something he can take credit for. And like, this is why the Liberals are just absolutely suffering in the polls because the people who out there who actually understand how inflation works, which I actually believe is probably a majority of Canadians, understand that uh, like the, uh, Justin Trudeau is not helping things at all and actually making the economy worse. Yet Justin Trudeau's strategy to get out of this is effectively like to accuse people of bigotry and racism. Like he, he, again, in a Toronto star article the other day, he said that people are only supporting pure poly because they want to go back to when Canada was like all white, which is insane. Like I had people saying that when I wrote an article saying that Justin Trudeau was saying people were racist and that's why his polling is down. They were trying to fact check me and say, well, he never said that. Like, yeah, what he said was literally worse. He's accusing people of like wanting Jim Crow racism in Canada and wanting to like deport people who aren't white. Like that, that's, that's, that's far more, that's a far worse thing to say than what I soft peddled his comments into of just saying racism. But again, like this is like Justin Trudeau is failing because he actually fails to touch on any issues that matter to people in a way that makes sense. He's always talking about, he's using kind of politics, the politics he used to win in 2021, which is kind of dividing people saying, fear your neighbor, uh, vote against them because they're unvaccinated and they're going to like somehow infect you. Uh, like vote for me because your neighbors are racist and I'm going to protect you from him by passing hate speech laws. And in 2023, that's not working anymore. Like I, I truly believe that there's not going to be an election in 2023 because Justin Trudeau, is, even as dumb as Justin Trudeau is, I don't think he's dumb enough to think that if he goes back to the polls within not, well, just a little bit more than a year after he went back to the polls last time, that, true, that Canadians aren't going to punish him. I, I don't think that we're going to see an election until at least 2024. Uh, and Justin Trudeau is just going to wait for the, the like the news cycle to settle out, for the media to sort of prop him back up when the economy starts naturally improving, because the economy was, of course, going to improve over time unless he voluntarily just tries to kill himself. That they're going to give him all the bent of the credits for the fact that the economy is coming back, even though it's probably going to have to do more with U.S. economic policy than Canadian. That that's when he's going to call an election. He knows he can't call one now, and his strategists in the back seem to be unable to actually get over his his inadequacies right now. So, uh, I guess this started with me talking about liberal voters, but uh, yeah, like he he's always going to maintain his base of people who think he can't do any wrong, which is why he's always within that minority government position. I just don't see where he's going to ever get a majority again. There's not enough people out there who are willing to for, to sort of, I guess, forget what they know about how inflation works in order for them to jump over to voting for the for the liberals. There are liberals out there who will maybe get even more deluded and vote for the NDP and think that if they just double the spending that Justin Trudeau is currently pursuing, then somehow things are going to get better. You know, somehow what Justin Trudeau is doing is making everything worse. But if it just, the policy is just done more, Somehow we're going to break through to the other side and we're going to fall like, you know, end up in NDP utopia. But at least I'm probably never going to have to worry about the NDP forming government. And hopefully I'm not going to have to worry about the liberals forming government for another decade after after the next election. But, you know, here's hoping.